silence dominated the room. Alicia on the other hand, did not stop releasing the energy in her body, as she directed it towards Jack. But, it was only after a while that she suddenly realized that, there was something wrong. According to how it was supposed to be, when she utilized her ability, Jack was supposed to have already agreed to what she had said. He was supposed to be under her control right now, doing as she wanted him to. But surprisingly, Jack was just looking at her, with a cold gaze. This gaze sent chills down her spine, as she felt threatened. Not wanting to believe that she could not control Jack, Alicia decided to expend all the energy that she possessed, to try and control him. But no matter how hard she tried, there was no change in Jack's expression at all. Are you done? I had already given you a chance to leave, but, you are still trying to think of controlling me? You must be tired of living. Jack said indifferently. But still, the anger within his eyes could now be seen clearly. The next moment, he got to his feet, and began approaching Alicia step by step. At the same time, an intense aura suddenly surged out of his body. This aura was so thick that, Alicia was forced to retreat. Ho oh, how can this be possible? How can you not fall under the control of my ability? You are supposed to be hypnotized right now. Alicia nearly screamed as she looked at Jack who was approaching her steadily. Not wanting to entertain the lady in front of him anymore, Jack decided to deal with her once and for all. After all, if she could not take the chance that he had given her, then, there was no guarantee that she might actually decide to leave Celine alone. Previously, he was completely unwilling to let her go. After all, she was like a ticking time bomb that could explode at any time. But, due to his principles, he had no choice but to let her go. But now, she had given him a chance and a reason to completely eradicate her. With incredible speed, Jack stretched his right hand towards Alicia's neck. It was also at this moment that Alicia suddenly came back to her senses. She realized that, Jack was way stronger than she had estimated. And, the hand that was approaching her, it was approaching her at a speed that she could not evade at all. Other than getting dumbfounded, she was also happy in her heart. If Jack was this strong, that implied that, there was no reason for her parents to refuse. After all, not only did she love him, but also, he was way stronger than the person that they had arranged for her to get married to. Jack was just about to grab Alicia's neck, when suddenly, he was forced to retreat. At this moment, he had realized that there was a strong feeling of danger. Even though it was not one that could kill him, it was one that had the intention to injure him. The moment that he retreated, a shadow-like figure suddenly appeared. This figure was that of a man, but, not even a single feature of him could be seen. Instead, this person was covered in shadows, as if he himself was a shadow. Jack had seen everything clearly. During the time that he was approaching Alicia, intending to grab her neck, this figure suddenly emerged from her shadow. After a while, the shadow that was covering this person suddenly cleared out, revealing a middle-aged man. He was having sharp brows, and a stubble on his chin. He possessed black hair, and brown eyes that were looking at Jack with killing intent in them. I didn't expect that someone like you will appear here. Do you mind telling me which stronghold you are from? After a moment of silence, the man asked in a deep voice. Before even Jack could reply, Alicia looked at the man with an incredulous gaze. Then, she asked, Uncle James, why did you come? I asked you not to come with me. James did not respond, instead, he looked at Jack, waiting for his response. Additionally, he was trying to make sure that he kept an eye on Jack, just in case he made any move. I'm not from any stronghold, but anyway, she offended me, and, you better get out of the way if you don't want to be affected as well. This time, I had to deal with her, because I have already been lenient with her long enough. Jack responded coldly. The person in front of you is also a superhuman. Currently, he is at the third stage, a single stage above you. He has already broken the third lock. A system prompt appeared in front of him, as he looked at James in front of him. At the same time, he couldn't help but get surprised by this piece of information. It was no wonder that he felt that the person in front of him was kind of dangerous. Lucky for him, currently, he possessed the combat capabilities of a person who was above his level. As of present, he had already broken two locks, making him a superhuman of the second stage. James narrowed his eyes as he looked at Jack. Then, he responded to Alicia's question, Young lady, you have to know that I cannot allow you to leave without security. If anything happens to you, then there's nothing that I can tell your parents to explain what happened to you. Alicia pursed her lips as she looked at the person in front of her. This was the person who had been protecting her ever since she was eight. Now, it had already been over a decade, and he had been taking care of her. 
and for that reason, she always referred to him as an uncle, because, that was how he treated her. And as she thought much about it, she suddenly realized that, if James had not appeared, then, it was true that Jack would have already grabbed her by now. She looked at Jack who was standing in front of her with an extraordinary aura surrounding him. It was only at this moment that she suddenly realized that, the aura that was surrounding Jack at this moment was that of a superhuman. Her eyes widened in surprise. She had never expected that Jack had already reached the superhuman level. Additionally, his aura was not weak when compared to the one that James was currently releasing. She suddenly felt that she was lucky. Additionally, she understood the reason as to why her ability was not able to work on Jack. After all, Jack was a superhuman, and the ability that she possessed could not affect people of that caliber. That was unless she herself became a superhuman as well. Young man, it is not a problem if you don't want to tell me about the stronghold that you belong to. But nonetheless, I hope that the matter ends here. After all, if the two of us fight, we are going to cause a lot of destruction here, and are going to invite a lot of attention towards us, James said calmly. Jack did not respond, but his decision did not waver. Instead, he had already decided that he had to eliminate the two people in front of him. Even though he was not sure about dealing with the man, he was sure that he could have a chance of dealing with Alicia. When James saw that Jack had no intention of letting them go, he took a deep breath and said, How about this? You let us go, and we are going to forget about everything that has happened here. We don't get involved with anyone that is closer to you, in exchange for you not trying to fight against us. It was not that James was afraid of fighting Jack, it was just that, it was not clear about what background Jack possessed. For him to be able to break the genetic lock at his age, it implied that he possessed incredible resources. Jack thought about it for a moment, before he finally decided to agree to it. It was not that he was agreeing to let them go, but, this grudge had to be paid back at one point in time. Additionally, even though he did not believe that the two of them were going to leave Selene alone, he had to ensure that she was protected. Know this, you are leaving now, but I will make sure that she pays for what she has done. More than that, he had to ensure that she also got stronger, so that she could take care of some problems by herself. At the end of it all, there was no way that he was going to be there with her every now and then. Without saying anything else, he went back and sat down, after that, he said in a calm voice, I won't be sending you off then. But know this, you are leaving now, but I will make sure that she pays for what she has done. Even though James was completely displeased by what Jack had said, he had no choice but to give in for now. After all, it was true that Alicia was the one at fault. Had it been that they were dealing with just anybody, then, James would not have cared about who was in the wrong, and just dealt with them. But now, it was completely different if they met with a person that might be stronger than them or perhaps on par with them. I hope that you will not do that. But, let us not discuss this matter now. We will take our leave then. James said. And in the next instant, even before Alicia could say anything, with an incredible speed, he carried her and the two of them left the villa. After the two of them left the villa, they did not speak. Instead, James made sure that they had already gone as far as possible from Jack's villa. It was only after they had arrived several kilometers away, that he suddenly felt relieved. As they stopped, he began panting. He had already spent a lot of energy in order to move at such an incredible speed. What's more, he also used his ability, to veil the two of them, in order not to be detected by anyone as they moved. So, if he encountered Jack at this moment, he was sure that he was going to lose. Luckily, he had noticed that Jack was not coming after them. After placing Alicia down, he decided to take some rest, before the two of them could continue and go back to the stronghold. This trip was supposed to end here, considering that, they had already encountered a person that had already broken the genetic lock, and they had offended him. Uncle James, why did you agree to his conditions? Aren't you supposed to be stronger than him? You could have simply taken him with us. Alicia complained. She felt that, it was going to be a difficult task to be able to encounter Jack ever again. After all, she had just tried controlling him, and for that reason, Jack had been angry at her. Additionally, from his current capabilities, it was obvious that he did not possess a simple background. So, he might actually use his background to make sure that she did not ever get closer to him, nor the people that he cared about. It is not that simple. That young man has already reached the second stage of the superhuman level. And, just from the aura that he possesses, I can tell that I will not be able to defeat him that easily, James replied. Alicia's eyes suddenly widened in surprise. This was the first time that she had heard James saying that he was not capable of defeating another person, who was at a lower level than him so easily. 
Additionally, the information that Jack had already reached the second stage of the superhuman level was enough to shock her. That level was not something that could be reached easily. But surprisingly, Jack had managed to do that at a young age. Uncle James, do you perhaps think that I can make him agree to marry me? If I know his background, I'm sure that we can convince his parents to agree for the two of us to get married. Alicia said with her eyes glistening with excitement and expectation. She didn't believe that it was going to be a difficult task now if she wanted to get Jack. As for his love, that was something that she was going to try and get it after a period of time. After all, it was only recently that Jack had come to know about her, while she on the other hand, had known about him for about three months. That might actually happen. But, I am not sure that that young man is going to agree to marry you. From the looks of it, he hates you. James said as he looked helplessly at Alicia. Previously, when she was being forced for the arranged marriage, he pitied her, and after she decided that she was going to look for a person that was way better than the one that they had decided on, he had also decided to go with her, just to ensure that she was protected. The family that she belonged to, had several enemies, and, there was no guarantee that there was not even a single one of them that realized that she had left, even though she left secretly. Even her parents did not know where she had gone to. And, to say the least, if it was Jack, then, James thought that he was actually a good candidate for marriage for Alicia. But, it was just that, it didn't seem that Jack had any good feelings towards Alicia. But, this was to be expected considering that, Alicia had already done something to the person that Jack loved, and additionally, she had also tried controlling him. As a man, he was prideful. So, it was normal for Jack to erupt, and try killing Alicia, as she had tried turning him into a puppet. If Alicia was capable of making Jack love her, then, to say the truth, Jack would be way better than the person that Alicia's parents had decided on. It is going to be troublesome knowing about his background. After all, for him to be here, he might be just like you, coming out without informing anybody else. Additionally, had he not revealed it, then, I would not have realized that he had already become a superhuman. James sighed as he said. It doesn't matter. There are still nine months. I do believe that in these nine months, I will be able to find his background, and convince my parents to go over, and try to get the two of us married, Alicia said determinedly. But still, she knew that it was going to be a difficult task for this to happen, after all, it was also something that concerned whether Jack was going to agree on the matter or not. Moreover, what kind of relationship did he share with his parents? Then that she was the best candidate. If his parents were like hers, the ones that only cared about the benefits of their family, then, she believed that they were going to agree. And if they only cared about their son's happiness, then she would have to find another way that she was going to convince them that she was the best candidate. After all, currently, as compared to Celine, she was way better. Celine was weaker than she was, she herself possessed an ability, and more than that, the background that she possessed was also incredible. During the time that she had been here, she had already investigated about Celine's background, and, she came to know that, Celine's parents were just normal people. So, she thought that this was going to be her advantage. All right. We have to get back to the stronghold as soon as possible. I'm not sure about whether Jack is going to do anything or not, but, it is going to be better if we are back in the stronghold. James said after a while. He believed that, for someone like Jack, someone who had already broken the genetic lock, then, he was considered important to where he came from. So, it was going to be considered normal if there was a guardian with him. If Jack suddenly decided to send the guardian to come over and deal with them, then, it was going to be problematic for them. A guardian of a person that was already at the second stage of the superhuman level was bound to be stronger than that. Can we at least go and deal with Celine? I have to ingrain an idea into her mind, so that, she and Jack can break up finally. After all, it has to be natural, and I have to make sure that Jack doesn't notice. Alicia asked, completely reluctant to continue knowing that Jack and Celine were together, when she was back at the stronghold. That will not happen. You have to remember that, Jack has already given us a warning. If you start messing around again, then, there is bound to be consequences for that. Moreover, it will not be a problem for the two of them to part ways after we convince his parents. James shook his head as he responded. Although reluctant, Alicia had to agree with what James had said. And, knowing that Jack already hated her, it was better if she did not try to earn more of his hatred. It seemed that he did not hate her that much, in that, he would risk everything to deal with her. But, the same could not be said if she did something to Celine. I hope that during the time that I will be away, the anger that you are having towards me will have already calmed down. At that time, I do believe that I will be able to win your heart. 
Alicia thought to herself. As for that Celine, I will have to look for another way to deal with her. Perhaps I can recommend someone to come over and look for her, cause trouble, and ensure that Jack breaks up with her. That way, I will be able to increase the chances of winning his heart. As she thought of this, a malicious light flashed in her eyes, before disappearing. Still, everything was just a plan. She had to ensure that everything was in position, to ensure that nothing could be traced back to her, before carrying out the plan that she had in mind. At that time, she will be able to win everything that she wanted. It was not just Jack's love, but, even his attention, completely undivided. If Celine continued to stay in his life, even if she managed to convince his parents and the two of them got married, Jack would still care about Celine, considering that he loved her. Let's hurry up. I want to get back to the stronghold and talk to mom as fast as possible. There's something else that I will need her help with. After she hears what I have to say, I'm sure that she will be thrilled, Alicia said in an impatient voice. Give me a minute to take a rest first. After that, we can depart, James replied helplessly. At the same time, he already knew that Alicia was never going to give up. For her to be meeting with her mother, that implied that, she was planning something sinister. That was the only side of her that James was afraid of. After the two left, Jack remained contemplating. He was currently feeling uneasy considering that, he had just let go of a person that might be a source of danger to those that he loved. Although he did not believe that they were going to deal with him that easily, the same could not be said about Celine and the others. Celine had already been manipulated before, and, that was something that Jack hated the most. Currently, he was not sure about Celine's condition. After all, the interaction between the two of them had been minimal during the past week. Since he himself was busy investigating, and Celine had been instructed not to come over, the only source of communication between the two of them was just chatting. But nonetheless, the interaction between the two of them always ended as soon as it began, because, Celine always gave short responses. System, is there a way that I can improve Celine's ability to resist mind control? Jack asked after a moment of thinking. Yes. There is a way for you to be able to protect her from mind control. The solution is simple really, you simply have to upgrade your system authority to the second level, so that, she will be under the system's protection from such a thing. Jack. I already know about that. But, that is not something that I can do for now. It still needs some time to be completed. After all, the matter of dominating five industry is not something that can happen with just a blink of an eye. Jack replied helplessly. For the companies, there are a lot of procedures that had to be taken care of. It was just that, they could not be taken care of just because he wanted, but, there were some procedures that needed a lot of time to be completed. For that reason, it was going to take a lot of time to be able to dominate the five industries. And of course, the best method that he could utilize to make sure that he completed everything as soon as possible would be, purchasing all the other companies that were competing against him. But, that was something difficult, considering that, most of the people would not want to sell their companies, the ones that they had been involved in, perhaps for generations, no matter the amount of money that Jack would be willing to pay. Positive. You can increase Celine's mental strength by improving her level. Currently, the level of strength that she possesses is quite low. But, her mental strength is high, and that is the reason that's why she has not yet collapsed until now, even though, she was experiencing a lot. If she manages to improve to the fifth level of the ordinary humans, she would be able to resist such mind control with sheer willpower. But of course, that cannot happen as of now, considering that, she has a weakness as long as you are mentioned. Jack was relieved when he heard that there was a way that he could increase resistance to mental control. After all, he had to take precautions considering that, the enemy was out there. Additionally, he also knew that the system was right about the matter considering Celine's resolution. Currently, it was only when she was told to do something that could harm Jack, that she resisted. As for everything else, she didn't have the chance of resisting at all. But, that was not something that Jack was going to allow to continue. He had to ensure that, in case something like this ever happened again, Celine would be out of another person's control. He got to his feet, went into his room, and picked up the serum that he had been given by Maxwell. Celine had previously resisted being injected with this serum, but, it was going to be different now. System, is this serum actually safe to be injected into Celine? Jack asked as he looked at the small liquid that was contained inside a small cartridge. Yes, but, it is not of a high quality, so the effect of the serum is not that high. Jack was relieved. After that, he took the cartridge syringe, put it inside the ice storage, and left the room. When he got to the garage, he took the Bugatti Veyron, and drove out of Serenity residential area.
Currently, he did not know where Alicia had gone to. So, he had to ensure that Celine was safe first. After around 30 minutes, he arrived in front of Angel's prominence. He had already communicated with Celine during the trip, and had realized that she had come over to visit her mother. After getting out of the Bugatti Veyron, under the attention of the very few people that had been attracted by the car, he entered the building. Thereafter, he went to the topmost floor, and entered Caitlin's office. Knock, knock, after arriving there, Jack knocked on the door, and after a while, he heard Caitlin's voice asking him to go in. Hello. Jack greeted with a smile on his face. At this time, Celine was seated on the couch that was present inside the office. As for Caitlin, she was seated next to her. But, it was just a moment after he had greeted them, that he realized that there was something wrong. Currently, Celine's eyes were red, and Caitlin on the other hand was confused and at the same time, frustrated. Hello. Both the two of them replied. After that, Caitlin looked at Jack and asked, Jack, what is going on between the two of you? Celine has not been doing well recently, and, I have heard that the two of you have not been interacting that much during the past week. So, why don't you tell me the reason as to why that is so? You know, this girl has been crying from time to time, but, she refuses to tell me what is happening. Caitlin began complaining about Celine's situation. She was feeling helpless, considering that, although she knew that Celine was suffering, she did not know from what she was suffering from. Moreover, it did not seem like Celine was willing to tell her anything. All the same, she only told her that, she felt that she was just causing Jack trouble, and so, she was considering annulling the engagement between the two of them. Mom, stop it already. Celine looked at her mother, and exclaimed. She was not willing to show this side to Jack. After all, she knew that by revealing everything to him, she was going to make him feel guilty. And that, was not something that she wanted to see. What now? You don't want me to tell him about how you have been? Look at you. You have been behaving so strange recently. Additionally, you have already lost a lot of weight. You need to let what is in your chest out. If you don't tell me, then, you have to tell Jack. After all, the two of you are supposed to get married soon, Caitlin said in a stern voice. Celine pursed her lips, as she knew that what her mother had said was right, but, she was not really willing to discuss the matter. At the end of the day, this matter concerned Jack's life, and the life of all those people around her. If it was just a matter of her life alone, then, she would not really be pushed to such a situation. But, it was completely different now. She had been told by Alicia that, as long as she revealed anything to Jack, then, she had to be prepared for anything to happen to those that she loved. Additionally, Alicia had hidden from her that, she was actually having her eyes on Jack. Instead, she simply said that, she was investigating something. And, what she was investigating was something that required her to stay away from Jack. Jack took a deep breath, then, he went and sat beside Celine. After that, he looked at Caitlin and said, You can leave this matter to me. I will handle it. I hope you do so. After all, I'm really tired of seeing my daughter behaving in such a manner. She is acting so strange, that I don't believe that she is my daughter, the one that I know. Caitlin replied, before she decided to give the two of them space to talk. Silence dominated the room for a while, before Jack finally spoke. You know, I can understand why you are doing all of this. But, you don't have to do it anymore. Celine looked at Jack with teary eyes. Then, she said in an almost inaudible voice, Jack, you don't understand at all. This is not something that can be handled just because you are strong. I myself know that you are strong, stronger than anybody that I have ever seen. But, it is completely different now. It is not that I don't trust you. It is just that, I cannot risk it. I love you, and that is not something that can be changed easily. It is because of this that I cannot agree to what you are saying. Jack did not reply, instead, he pulled Celine into his embrace. Then, he said in a low voice, trust me this time. Why don't you tell me what happened? No matter what the situation is, you don't have to worry. I do promise you that, there is nothing that is going to happen. Celine Pov, trust me this time. Why don't you tell me what happened? No matter what the situation is, you don't have to worry. I do promise you that, there is nothing that is going to happen. Jack said in a low voice. I raised my head and looked into his eyes. The confidence within them was just as it had ever been. I have never seen him doubt himself before, and this time, it was the same. As long as I can remember, every time that he said that he was capable of doing something, then, that something had to be completed by him sooner or later. He had never claimed that he was capable of doing something that he wasn't. Although I really want to trust him, but, it is completely different now. It is not a matter of just finishing a certain task or going out and meeting someone. 
Now, we are dealing with a person that is capable of controlling other people's minds. During the past two weeks, I have been living with fear in my heart. I can remember all of it clearly. It just happened on a certain day. During that time, I was out with Angie and Wendy. We were enjoying ourselves after a whole week of work. We had decided to go shopping before going to other places within the city. Even though we were no longer going out for longer trips to the other provinces in the country, but still, it was enjoyable to stay in the company of my two sisters. At that time, I had gone to the washroom when suddenly, I felt a headache. At the same time, I felt like, there was something strange inside my mind. And before long, my vision suddenly darkened, and at the same time, a voice echoed inside my mind. Less than you will have to convince Jack to participate in the youth congregation. Greater than and that was all. It was just a single sentence. But this single sentence was like a command to me. No matter how I thought about it, no matter how much I tried, I could not resist. It was as if, if I resisted, then, I was going to blow up. No matter how I thought that this was just an illusion, the same voice kept echoing inside my mind. It was the very same sentence that was being repeated over and over. This was completely frustrating. At the same time, I was forced to believe that this was real. Even though I had never experienced something like this, at that time, I thought that perhaps, there was a ghost that was haunting me. After we went out with Jack to the majestic and swift horse racing tracks, and we met Luther, who invited us to the youth congregation, this voice inside my head also increased in intensity. So, after realizing that the youth congregation was something that concerned youths of different countries, and at the same time, all of them being from the top echelons of the society, I convinced Jack. It was only after I had told him, and he had agreed to go to the youth congregation, that the voice that had been irritating me in my mind suddenly disappeared. And of course, after I left, I went to see Denali. I had to do all the investigations, to ensure that, there was nothing that was going to go wrong at the youth congregation. With Denali's skills, we were able to investigate about the venue of the youth congregation, which was previously arranged as the Glaze Hotel. And, after looking through almost everything that we could look into, we didn't find anything suspicious. It was only then that my heart finally calmed down a little. But of course, there was no way that I was going to be okay completely. After all, I didn't even know the source of the voice. But, that voice belonged to a lady. I was stressed up. I really wanted to tell Jack the real reason as to why I had convinced him to join the youth congregation, but in the end, I decided to do my investigation first. After I found out the source, or there was no any other choice, then, I would inform Jack about it. Due to the stress, after I heard that Denali was going back to her hometown, I decided to tag along. This way, perhaps, I might be able to distress. But, I never expected that during our return trip, we would be hunted. We were not even allowed to enter the airport before a group of strong people began attacking us. And just like Samantha before, all of them wore armors, and possessed laser weapons. After two days of hunting, they finally defeated Denali and Samantha, after they brought strong people with them. And with that, they finally took me. They didn't say any reason, other than saying that, if Denali wanted to get me back, then, she had to go back to their base. I was knocked out. And after I woke up, I was locked inside a room, there, for three days, I was only given food, but I was never allowed out of that room. The room was self-contained, having a bathroom, and a washroom. But nonetheless, what was the use of taking a shower, if you could not change your clothes? I really wanted to complain, but considering that I was not somewhere that I was familiar with, I decided against it. I hoped that, just like always, Jack would be my knight in a shining armor. Three days later, Jack really came for me. As for the person that had locked me up, Jack had made sure to give him a thorough beating. Additionally, Jack had also taken in the whole organization as his subordinate. Even though it was true that they were only supposed to do the tasks that Jack asked them to do, and they did not have to risk their lives, what was the difference, considering that come they were going to do what Jack asked them to do as long as it did not concern their lives? When we came back, that voice came once again. This time, after realizing that we had missed the youth congregation, we came to a realization that, rather than just a simple discussion, it had been changed into a big competition between the youths of a different countries. And, this time, I was instructed that, I had to ensure that Jack participated as a fighter. Moreover, if I did not do that, then, I had to be prepared to lose something important to me. Of course, the voice mentioned my parents, and Jack. Of course I was scared. Left with no choice, considering that, the other party was capable of instructing me without seeing them. I knew that it was going to be difficult to deal with them. So, I did not inform Jack about the matter as well. 
But this had been going on, completely frustrating me. After all, after Jack had finished this, I was asked once again to keep my distance from him. No matter how much I really wanted to resist, this command prevented me from doing that. And all this time, I had been sobbing in front of my mother. She was the only person that I could seek for support from. As for Jack, I was worried that he would notice something. And if that happened, then, he might end up in trouble. For a whole week, I had been making sure that, the two of us did not interact that much. As for chatting, I only made sure that, I responded to him with simple replies, that ensure that we did not have any long conversations. Of course, all of this was happening due to the influence in my mind, but, I was able to resist the time that I was told to secretly attack Jack. At that time, no matter what, there was no way that I was going to do that. It was better that I died, rather than harming Jack. It was also during this time that I met the owner of the voice. She was a lady, a beautiful one at that. Just from looking at her, I could tell that she was a vicious person. For that reason, unless I had a solution to the matter, I did not dare to risk anything. And today, just like every other day that I felt completely distressed, I had come over to my mother, but, I had never expected that Jack would come over. He had contacted me, and I did not hide from him about my current location. Moreover, during the time that the two of us were communicating, I did not hear that voice again. It was as if it had just vanished. But still, this was not the first time that it had vanished. It always came back as long as I went against what it was saying. And now, looking at Jack's eyes that were looking at me, I suddenly felt relieved. After all, the voice was no longer there, but, there was still fear that the voice that had been tormenting me for a long time, would come back. More than that, I was even more afraid that, perhaps, the owner of the voice, would harm Jack. In the end, due to Jack's encouragement, I told him everything that I knew. I didn't hide anything, and, the more that I talked to him, the more confident I became. After all, as I was telling him everything, there was no change that happened. Nothing happened to Jack, and, the voice did not appear. You have been through a lot. Jack said to me as he sighed. At the same time, he caressed my hair, as I laid in his embrace. At this time, I really felt relieved considering that, I was able to tell Jack everything, and nothing happened. But, we will have to change that. We will have to make sure that, you will no longer be susceptible to mind control again. Even if it is going to take a lot of resources, I'm going to try and make sure that, you will be protected. This I promise. Jack said in a determined voice. Looking into those blue eyes that were looking into mine, added to the confidence in his voice, I felt that my heart was melting. After all, every promise that Jack made to me, he had always made sure to fulfill it. But of course, the only one that he had yet to fulfill would be the one that he promised that he would marry me. That was the promise that had been made several years ago, before we lost our memories of each other. And of course, another promise had been added, the one that he had just made. I trust you. I replied with a smile. After that, I took the initiative to seal his lips. At last, I can be together with the person that I love, without any other person's interference. After making sure that Celine had calmed down completely, Jack finally took out the freezer box. This was where the serum that he had been given by Maxwell was kept. When Celine saw that Jack had taken the serum, she was surprised. After all, she had not expected that when he came over, he had also taken the serum with him. Previously, during the time that he wanted to give her the serum, she had rejected. It was not that she didn't want to get stronger, but, she felt that, the price of that serum was just too much. At that time, she had not left Jack with any choice. She did not expect that, he was going to come with the serum once again. Jack, I can accept everything else, other than that serum. I know how important that serum is, just considering that it was the only one of that quality, that remained in the shadow organization. Celine said with a reluctant gaze. It was not that she did not want to get stronger. What she had experienced had also increased the thirst that she possessed for getting stronger. But, it was just that, she was not willing to make Jack pay a lot just to ensure that she got stronger. What nonsense are you saying, you know, even though it is true that this serum is important, but, can you tell me what is more important to me other than you? Additionally, even if I want to keep this serum, to whom am I supposed to give? It is completely useless to me. Jack berated. More than this, you have to know that, this serum was given to you as compensation for locking you up for three days. So, it is rightfully yours, and not mine. Jack went ahead and explained. After hearing this, Celine felt sweet in her heart. After all, she had realized that, other than her, it seemed that Jack did not consider anyone else as important as herself. 
Anyway, looking into the matter, one would realize that, other than Celine, Jack did not really share that much deep relationship with anybody else. The only person that he really cared about previously other than Celine, was his mother, whose matters were currently doubtful. All right. Stop being stubborn now. You better get stronger so that you can assist me in fulfilling my promise of making sure that you are protected, Jack said, as he prepared the serum. This kind of serum did not require much preparation. Instead, it only needed the person that was supposed to be injected with the serum, and the serum itself. Knowing that there was no way that she was going to convince Jack otherwise, and remembering what had just happened not long ago, Celine agreed. Additionally, she couldn't help but look forward to getting stronger. Jack placed the serum that was inside the cartridge into the cartridge syringe, before taking the cotton, and rubbing a small content of alcohol onto Celine's skin. After that, he inserted the needle, aiming for the vein, since he currently possessed professional medical skills, it was not difficult for him to do the injection. As the serum got injected into her blood, Celine felt pain for a moment, but it disappeared right in the next second. Additionally, she felt somehow dizzy, and at the same time, she felt that, for some reason, she had begun getting stronger. It will take some time to take effect. The serum is going to activate several cells in your body, and strengthen them further. Jack said in a low voice as he took back the cartridge syringe, and placed it inside the icebox once again. Imhum. Celine replied with a simple nod, before leaning onto Jack's shoulder. For now, being together with him, she felt a strong sense of security that she was not willing to abandon. After spending some time with Celine, chatting, laughing, and reminding each other of the past, Jack finally felt that it was time for him to leave. There was still yet another thing that he needed to handle right now. It was also at this time that Caitlin came in. When she saw that her daughter was back to her normal vibrant condition, she was finally relieved. Even though she did not know what had happened, at least, she was relieved that nothing had happened. Additionally, the relationship between Jack and Celine didn't seem to have any issues, and in fact, it seemed to be progressing all too well. There was nothing more that she could wish for other than this. I will be leaving now. I still need to meet with someone else, to discuss something important, Jack said as he got to his feet. Of course, he was not going to tell Caitlin about his mother, unless he had confirmed it. The two of them shared a deep relationship, as they had been together for several years. And, after Caitlin came to realize that Anne had passed away, she was devastated. And now, Jack was not ready to give her hope, only to disappoint her later on if his suspicions were not right. Be careful on the road. Anyway don't mind that. I'm pretty sure that if someone hits you with a car, they are the ones that are going to suffer. Caitlin wished him a safe journey, only to chuckle later as she realized that, perhaps with Jack's current capabilities, it was the cars that were going to suffer. Jack simply shook his head, before leaving the room. He wanted to meet with Benjamin, because there was something else that he wanted to confirm from him. After Jack left, Caitlin looked at his daughter whose mood had improved completely. In fact, it seemed that, she had become way better than she was before. Can you tell me what the two of you did? You suddenly shifted from a crybaby, to a delighted princess. In short, you are actually blooming. And, is that a blush on your face? Caitlin asked as she went and sat next to Celine. Humph. I'm not telling you anything. Celine puffed her cheeks as she shifted her head in another direction. She knew that, currently, her mother wanted to tease her. Now, can you look at that? It was not long ago that you were crying here, claiming that you wanted to part ways with Jack. But now, it doesn't seem like so anymore. Has he come over and confused you, ensuring that the heart that he stole from you was completely locked away, and could not be given back to you? Caitlin asked once again with a smile. Celine looked at her mother resentfully, but only for a moment before she finally began telling her about what had happened. She didn't hide much from her, and revealed to her that, currently, there was someone else that had the capabilities of controlling other people's minds. She also went ahead and informed her about what Jack had told her. Jack had already informed her that, he had met with Alicia, and currently, the problem had been dealt with. But, it was not a long-term solution, unless he completely dealt with her. The more that Caitlin listened to Celine, the more surprised she became. At the same time, she couldn't help but wonder if the world that she was living in currently, was the same world that she had been living in a few months ago. What is happening to this world? Previously, it was this solution that Jack came over with, that is capable of increasing our strength. And more than that, out of nowhere, he possessed incredible wealth and abilities that I knew nothing about during all the years that I knew him, Caitlin said in disbelief. More than that, I had never known that he was a good fighter, 
but abruptly, he was so good at it that, he trained you, and you came over and trained me as well, Caitlin continued. And now, leaving Jack alone, I'm suddenly realizing that I was just a frog in a well. I thought that I knew much, but in the end, it seemed that I knew nothing. The strongholds, several organizations, several abilities, oh my. This is just going to make me go crazy. Celine looked at her mother and giggled. Then, she said, well, you better get ready to be even more shocked. After all, currently, Jack is so strong that he has already left the limits of the normal humans, and he is considered as a superhuman. You might be surprised that tomorrow, I am also a superhuman. At least I can live with that. After all, you are my daughter, and even if you get strong enough to destroy this world with just a simple snap of your finger, I will not be surprised, instead, I will be happy about it. With that ability, I'm pretty sure that nobody will be able to kidnap you again. Caitlin replied with a smile. Mom, why do you keep on mentioning the matter of me getting kidnapped? Does it look like I really like it? Or do you perhaps like seeing me getting kidnapped every now and again? Celine complained resentfully. Hee <laughs> hee, it is not like I like it. But, it is just funny to see how my daughter becomes a damsel in distress. And every time that happens, my mighty son-in-law always shows up as a knight in shining armor. Caitlin replied mischievously. Mom, are you my mother, or are you my evil mother-in-law? Celine asked in disbelief. And in response to this, Caitlin simply shook her head, before going back to her desk, to continue with the work that had already began piling up during the time that she was stressed. After leaving Angel's prominence, Jag did not return to the villa. Instead, he headed towards the Jezda residence. It had been a while ever since he had come over. The last time that he came to this place, it was during the time that he was going to see Nathan. Now, he was also going there to see Benjamin. He had already begun arranging the questions that he had in mind, so that, he was going to make sure that the old man would not dodge any question. The last time that the two of them interacted, the old man left with words that were parables to him. Now, it was time for him to go and look for the meanings of the parables. When he arrived at the entrance, the security guards did not make anything difficult for him. They already knew about him, so, they simply did the primary security check, and allowed him into the residence. Since he did not know where Benjamin stayed, Jack could only go to his aunt's place. He wanted to ask her about Benjamin's whereabouts. Although he could have simply investigated where he was, he didn't have that time and he was impatient. Just after he got out of the car, he realized that, Jonathan had just gotten out of his family's mansion together with Wendy. Jonathan had of course introduced Wendy to his mother, and the relationship between the two of them was going on well. Hee hee. See who has finally remembered his family. Jonathan said sarcastically as he approached Jack. As for Wendy, she did not say anything, other than a simple nod as a greeting to Jack. Jack responded to Wendy's nod with another nod, then, completely ignored Jonathan's words. I came over to greet aunt and uncle before finally asking for something. Perhaps you can help me out, Jack said nonchalantly as he approached the mansion. Just say that the only reason as to why you are here is because you want my help, otherwise, I doubt that you would have come here, Jonathan said, as he turned around, and led the way into the mansion. Jack did not reply as always, as he knew that what Jonathan had said was true, but, he could not be blamed, considering that, not only had he been busy recently, but, he did not have that much of attachment towards the Jezda residence. After they got into the living room, Jack saw that his aunt Anita was currently seated there. It seemed that she was watching a soap opera. She was wearing a long purple dress, with her long silver hair tied into a ponytail, making her look reserved. Just her posture alone was enough to remind Jack of his own mother. The moment that she noticed him, she smiled brightly. Finally, my nephew has remembered me. I was wondering if you were not going to ever pay me a visit again, Anita said as she got out of her comfortable position and sat properly on the couch. It's not like that aunt, Jack shook his head, but there was nothing that he could say. After all, it was true that, even though his aunt cared about him, but, he on the other hand had not paid much attention to her. Come on in. Have a seat. She waved her hand and pointed towards the couch that was opposite her. At the same time, she got to her feet. Jack went ahead and took a seat on the couch. Jonathan and Wendy sat on another couch that was next to the one that he was sitting on. The two of them completely ignored him, as they began their public display of affection. After Anita served him with a glass of juice, she asked him, How have you been? You rarely contact me. Of course, Jack could see that there was grievance within Anita's eyes. He could tell that, he was a reminder of her sister. 
and, with his presence here, at least, she had something to remember her sister with, other than the photos that they had taken together long ago. On the other hand, of course, Anita could understand how things were. Not only was Jack busy, but, they had only known each other about two months ago. So, it was normal that Jack would not have that much of a relationship with her. Considering the life that he had been living in the Alfonso mansion, he seemed to be a person who had been living an independent life after his mother passed away. So, she understood him. But still, understanding was one thing, and accepting it was another. I'm sorry about that aunt. I will try as much as possible to make sure that I create time to come and pay you a visit more often. Jack said with a sigh. He could tell that other than the fact that he reminded her of her sister, Anita cared about him as well. The two of them went on to chat for a while, with mostly Anita asking questions. It seemed that she was completely worried about him, now that, Jack did not have anyone to talk to. Even though she knew that Jack had a fiancé, she knew that, there were things that men could not talk to their wives about. After all, these were matters that concerned their pride. For Jack, although he could have talked all these matters with his father, but, considering how unreliable and disgusting his father was, the only person that Jack could have talked to would have been his mother. But, with his mother gone, she believed that, she was the one that was supposed to take on that role. So, what brought you here today? Don't tell me that you came over to see me. I can already tell that you had some other intentions of coming over. Anita said after chatting with Jack for about 20 minutes. Jack was a little embarrassed. After all, his aunt cared about him, but he on the other hand, was completely nonchalant about her. It seemed that, he had to make amendments on that. The main reason as to why I came over was to see grandfather. Jack stated, even though he said grandfather, there was no affection in his voice at all. Anita sighed. She knew that in the entire Jezda family, the only people that Jack cared about would most probably be herself, her husband, and Jonathan. As for the rest, it did not seem like Jack cared about them at all. Jonathan, Jonathan, not wanting to dwell much on the matter, she called out to Jonathan. But when she realized that the guy was not even here, she shouted at him, finally, bringing him out of his own world. Yes mom, Jonathan responded, he had almost forgotten himself, and had even forgotten that he was currently in presence of his mother. As for Wendy, she had already gotten comfortable here. The engagement between her and Jonathan was supposed to happen during the following month. With the interaction that she had with Anita, she felt like, this was just another home for her. Can you take Jack to go and see your grandfather? Shaking her head, Anita asked. Okay. Jonathan nodded. After that, the two of them left, leaving behind Wendy and Anita to continue watching soap opera. What do you want to discuss with my grandfather? You really don't pay attention to him most of the times. I'm surprised that you are actually looking for him today. Jonathan asked after they had left the mansion. Just something about my mother. I think that old man is hiding something from me. Jack replied. Grandpa is hiding something from you? I never knew that he is a person to keep secrets. Jonathan was surprised. Additionally, he wondered what kind of secret about Jack's mother that his grandpa would be hiding. He knew what was known around that several years ago, Anne had decided to leave the Jezda residence and disappeared. They had tried looking for her, but they never got any clues about her whereabouts. It was only recently when Jack appeared, that they finally knew what had happened. Even he himself came to a realization about what happened only after he received information from Jack. Deciding not to question much about the matter, since it seemed that Jack was not willing to talk about it, he led the way towards another mansion. This mansion was located in the same side of their own mansion, but, it was way bigger. As they approached, they saw a few maids and other people working. Somewhere cleaning the courtyard, and others were doing other simple tasks. I'm here to see my grandfather. Is he around? Jonathan asked one of the maids the moment that they arrived there. Yes, he's here. Wait a moment please. I will inform him about your arrival. The maid who had long black hair, wearing a blue and white maid outfit gave Jonathan a deep bow, before responding. Immediately after that, she entered into the mansion. Jack could not help but raise his brows a little, after all. He had never expected that, this Jezda family really had several rules that he considered stupid. This was Jonathan's grandfather's house, but still, he had to ask for permission before going in. The mansion was big, but still, even if the old man didn't want to be interrupted, he could have taken a single room that he dealt with important matters in. But, even just entering into the mansion, they had to receive the permission. And if the old man was not there, then, it seemed that they would not allow anyone in. 
Nonetheless, since he did not take this as his family, then, he did not want to say anything about it. After a few minutes, the maid came out, and said that the old man had allowed them to go in. Jonathan nodded, before the two of them entered into the mansion. When they arrived in the living room, they found that the old man was there, relaxing on the couch. He didn't seem to have been doing anything important. When he saw the two of them arriving, he raised his brows a little. Then, he sat up on the couch, and asked, I never expected that you were going to pay me a visit. So, what brought you over? Benjamin asked as he looked towards Jack. When he saw the two of them arriving, he raised his brows a little. Then, he sat up on the couch, and asked, I never expected that you were going to pay me a visit. So, what brought you over? Benjamin asked as he looked towards Jack. I have something that I would like to discuss with you about. I don't know if we can talk here? Jack responded as he looked at the surroundings. Since this was the living room, from time to time, maids would pass by, while dealing with their work. Looking at the serious expression that was on Jack's face, Benjamin knew that this was something important. After all, this was the first time that Jack had come to look for him, and, he could already guess what it was. Of course, he did not believe that Jack was here simply because he wanted to join the family. That topic had already been forgotten about, after Jack refused resolutely about the matter of joining the family, as that was going to restrict his freedom. Additionally, it was not like he needed them, he was currently even way better than they were. Getting to his feet, Benjamin waved his hand towards Jack and said, follow me. If there is really something important that you really want to talk to me about, then, we can discuss in my study room. Jack nodded his head and followed. Jonathan was just about to follow when suddenly, the old man glared at him and said, where are you going? This is a matter between him and I you are not supposed to be involved in this matter. So, you can busy yourself with something else. Jonathan. Jonathan was left speechless. At the same time, he couldn't help but think to himself that, what can be so important that you want to keep as a secret from me? It is not like there is something that I should not know. After all, I will be taking over the position of the family head very soon. But of course, Jonathan simply thought to himself, rather than saying it out loud, he stood in place, watching as his grandfather and Jack disappeared behind a corridor. In the end, he could only shake his head, and decide to go and spend his time together with Wendy. Anyways, it was not like he was losing anything, he had been planning to go on a date with Wendy, but, the plan had been disrupted by the arrival of Jack. And now, it seemed that he was no longer needed. As Jack stepped inside the door that Benjamin had opened for him, he found himself surrounded by a harmonious blend of contemporary design and timeless aesthetics. The walls were adorned with opulent wallpaper, featuring intricate patterns in shades of gold, silver, and cream. The soft, diffused lighting highlighted the subtle textures and added a touch of warmth to the room. Tall windows, dressed in lavish floor-to-ceiling curtains, allowed soft rays of natural light to filter through, illuminating the space with a gentle glow. At the center, a grand desk made of rich, dark mahogany commanded attention with its sleek lines and impeccable craftsmanship. The polished surface reflected the ambient light, showcasing the ornate silver-plated writing utensils neatly arranged on an exquisite crystal desk organizer. A pristine white leather blotter sat atop the desk, inviting creativity and productivity. Stretching along one wall, custom-designed bookshelves proudly showcased an extensive collection of leather-bound books. The books themselves, carefully curated and arranged by genre, were arranged in a way that felt like a work of art. Soft, recessed lighting accentuated each shelf, drawing attention to the vibrant hues and embossed spines of cherished volumes. In a quiet corner, a plush armchair, upholstered in luxurious velvet, beckoned with its inviting embrace. Placed beside a magnificent fireplace with a mantle of marble, it offered a cozy spot for moments of contemplation. A soft cashmere blanket draped over the armrest, providing both comfort and style. Jack was surprised to find out that, there was actually a fireplace in this place. After all, considering the level of technology that was present, there was no need for that, even in winter. But, looking at Benjamin who had just taken his seat behind the desk, he thought that, this might have to be expected. After all, Benjamin was an old man, and perhaps, he relished the past. Deciding not to focus on the matter, he continued scrutinizing his surroundings, and to say the truth, he had actually been amazed by how this old man kept his study room neat. Adjacent to the armchair, an elegant bar cart showcased a selection of fine wines and spirits, inviting indulgence while fostering conviviality. Crystal-cut decanters, gleaming cocktail shakers, 
and polished silverware added a touch of sophistication, ready to serve the discerning connoisseur. Above the fireplace, an oversized abstract painting that commands attention, its vibrant colors and dynamic strokes creating an air of sophistication and artistic flair. Intricately designed wall sconces, adorned with delicate crystals, cast a warm glow, illuminating the artwork with an ethereal beauty. The flooring was adorned with a lush rug, its intricate patterns and vivid colors adding a touch of opulence to the room. An intricately designed chandelier, crafted with crystal droplets, hung from the ceiling, casting shimmering reflections across the room. Jack had to admit that, in this study room, every detail had been meticulously chosen to create a luxurious haven for knowledge, relaxation, and inspiration. From the fine craftsmanship to the sumptuous furnishings, the space exuded an aura of refined beauty, offering an exceptional ambiance for intellectual pursuits and moments of utmost sophistication. Take a seat. That is unless you don't want to talk to me anymore, and if that is the case, you can allow me to continue relaxing. When Benjamin noticed that Jack was still standing, looking around, he cleared his throat, before pointing towards the seat that was just in front of the desk. Jack stopped looking at his surroundings, and went ahead and sat on the chair. After that, he looked at the old man and asked, Just how much are you hiding about to my mother from me? Benjamin looked at Jack with a slight frown on his face, and after maintaining silence for a moment, he replied, I have never hidden anything from you. It is just that. I have never told you, because you have never asked me about it. Jack got impatient the moment that he realized that, the old man was trying to play the games that he had already gotten used to. It seemed that, he didn't want to talk about the matter, and was just planning to go around the topic. Why don't you simply tell me what I need to know, rather than beating around the bush? Or, if you don't want to tell me something, it is way better if you inform me about that, rather than allowing me to continue wasting time here, Jack said impatiently. Currently, he had a lot to deal with. Other than the four companies that he was supposed to dominate the entire industry, there was also a matter concerning the Shadow Organization, Alicia, the Panthers Organization, and even the Butterfly Organization. Unknowingly he had gotten himself involved in several matters at the same time, and, now, he had to try and solve as many mysteries as possible, to ensure that, all these things would not try to drag him down. Sigh. Okay. So, why don't you tell me what you want to know about? Knowing that he could no longer keep the secrets from Jack, Benjamin sighed before asking. Knowing that there was no need for him to continue arguing with the old man, Jack went ahead and asked, about my mother. There was a time that you told me that, if she really wanted to leave the Alfonso family, then, nobody would have been capable of stopping her. Why don't you explain to me why that is so? Benjamin remained silent for a moment, as he looked at Jack's expression. But, no matter how much he looked at it, he did not see any changes, and it did not show any shift of emotions, it was completely indifferent. Deciding not to dwell on the matter, he began informing Jack about what he knew about. Initially, this was something that is supposed to be kept as a secret in the family. But, considering that you are not part of the family because you refused to come in, I guess that, I am not informing anyone in the family about the matter. Well, scratch that. The family rules also stated that, I am not allowed to inform an outsider about the core secrets of the family that might. Benjamin was just about to continue, when he was suddenly interrupted by Jack. There's no need for you to inform me about the family rules. At the end of the day, I am not part of the family. So, you can simply go ahead and inform me of what I want. Benjamin looked at Jack, but he did not complain that, currently, Jack was not treating him with respect, unlike Jonathan. Anyway, he could only blame himself for what happened. At the same time, he thought that, perhaps, this was the result of following the family rules strictly. Perhaps, there was a need to change the family rules that have been there for a long time now. The reason as to why I told you that, if your mother wanted to leave that place, then, nobody could have stopped her is simply because she possessed the ability of leaving. With the capabilities of the Jezda family, I do believe that you did not believe the fact that, we actually did not find her after she left home, Benjamin explained. With the capabilities of the Jezda family, I do believe that you did not believe the fact that, we actually did not find her after she left home, Benjamin explained. Jack knew that what Benjamin said was true. After all, he had always been questioning himself that, if it was true that the Jezda family really possessed the incredible capabilities since long ago, then, how is it possible that, with Anne staying at Crystal City, it was difficult for them to trace her? Just from the fact that, Nathan was able to know where Anne was and had even orchestrated for her murder, Jack could tell that, it was true that, the Jezda family had the capabilities of knowing about Anne's whereabouts. 
Crystal City, even though it was small as compared to the cities that were found in the central province, but, in the western province, it was a notable city. So, by staying there, that implied that, the Jezda family could have used the connections that it possessed, to easily get her. Of course, we already knew where she was. But, she told us that, she was not willing to come back home. She wanted to be free, so, no matter what, we could not continue binding her and the family, when she needed to have a life of her own. Benjamin continued. Bind? What kind of binding are you talking about? Can it be the matter concerning the family rules that were set long ago? Jack asked with a frown. Completely ignoring the question that Jack had asked, Benjamin continued. Since it was her decision, then, we did not want to interfere anymore. As long as she followed what was supposed to be done, then, there would be no problem at all. Sigh, previously, I had thought that, she had found the person that she really loved. But in the end, although she loved him, that guy did not love her. Instead, he loved about the background, and the support that he was supposed to get after marrying her mother. Of course, we had already investigated about Dalton, and we found out that he had already married two wives. It was just that, since your mother decided not to use the family influence when dealing with the matter of her love, we decided not to interfere. At least, we believed that, she was going to learn a lesson from this. But, we had never expected that, she would never want to give up on it. This went on for several years, until you were born. Since it was her decision to continue staying there, there was no way that we were going to interfere, and take you out of there, to take you out of the misery that you were in. And then, it came a time that, she suddenly disappeared. And, ever since she disappeared, we have been trying to look for her, but we never managed to find her. It was also during this time that we wanted to take you out of the Alfonso family, but, we were worried that, we were going to do something that was against Anne's plans. When it was just about to reach five years, we had finally come to a decision that, no matter what, we had to take you out of there. But in the end, you made the first move, and left the place. Of course, we have always been keeping an eye on you, but we never interfered with anything you did. And to say the truth, I'm pretty surprised that you actually possess such incredible capabilities. Leaving that aside, until today, we have not managed to find your mother. There are no traces of her anywhere, no matter how hard we have tried looking. Without any traces, we are left hopeless. That is, unless she decides to come over, there is no way that we can find her. Benjamin finally completed with a melancholic voice. Instead of answering the questions, Benjamin had just added another pile of questions on the ones that Jack previously possessed. After all, there was yet another thing that he could not understand. The first one was the fact that, it seemed that his mother was given a choice to make, and not that she was forced to do anything. Additionally, it seemed that, Benjamin and the rest of the family members were not capable of forcing her to do anything. Moreover, they had to respect her decisions as well. And lastly, it was the fact that, Benjamin had just said that, his mother disappeared. Jack did not believe that with the abilities of the Jezda family, it was not actually capable of knowing that, his mother had already passed away about five years ago. Moreover, if it was true that his mother had disappeared, then, why was it that, Anita was so sad, and, she had also attended the memorial that happened not long ago. As if seen through the questions that Jack possessed, Benjamin continued. I know what you're thinking about. You're thinking that, your mother died. But, that is not true. The one that you buried is actually a clone, and not her real body. So, I can say that, you have been pranked. As for whether it is good or bad, you can decide on that yourself. No matter how much Jack wanted to control his expression, the surprise on his face was clear. After all, he had been leaving for five years, knowing that, his mother had passed away. But in the end, he had never expected that, what they had buried was just her clone. This implied that, he had been living all those four years, believing that his mother had passed away, but, all of it was just a lie. Other than the fact that, he felt that he had been deceived, he couldn't understand what was the main aim for his mother to decide on something like that. Or, could it be that it was not her decision, but, a decision of another person? Jack was completely confused. No matter how much he tried to make things look like they were logical, nothing made sense to him at all. And please, don't ask me if the clone was made by her or us, or someone else. That is the information I don't know. Oh, I know that our family was not involved in the making of the clone. Benjamin made himself clear. Just as Jack was continuing, trying to make sure that he understood something out of all the information that he had been given, Benjamin continued speaking. I know that you want to know the reason as to why we were always agreeing to what she said. The only reason behind that is that, your mother was a superhuman. 
Jack's mind went blank momentarily, as he tried processing the information. It was not that he had not been expecting something like this, but, all this came so abruptly. He had already been making speculations about his mother possessing incredible capabilities. But to say the truth, he had not expected her to be a superhuman. I remember I told you that this world is hiding a lot, and, one of them is this. Even your mother was hiding a lot from you. In this world, there are a lot of people that possess incredible capabilities that are completely out of this world. And, that is something that we have been trying to understand, but, no matter what, we cannot. It is still a mystery to us. Currently, there are several strongholds that are present in the world. All of them are used for defense, and on the other hand, they are used as research centers as well. All the superhumans are supposed to be there. As for your mother, she had been going there from time to time. But, ever since she disappeared, we have tried looking for her in every location, and stronghold that we can access, but, we have not found any traces of her. In short, your mother simply vanished. As for where she vanished to, we are still looking for, and perhaps, you might as well be helpful to enable us find her, Benjamin concluded. Jack remained silent. All this information required him to continue processing it all. After all, even though it was true that he was a man, and he had his own pride, but, that did not mean that, he did not possess emotions. After all, it was one thing to know that, his mother came from a family that possessed an incredible background, way better than the one that he had been, being treated like a bast road. But, it was completely different when coming to know that, his mother had been hiding a lot from him, and more than that, from the letter that she had left in the envelope, she said something about passing away, she never said about going anywhere. This made the matter confusing. After all, if it was true that she had passed away, then, how did that happen? She was a superhuman, and that implied that, the poison that had been given to her by Marion was completely useless to her. Well, even though it might be true that Marion was not involved with the death of his mother, of course, Jack did not regret killing her. At the end of the day, she had attempted to do so, and that, was punishable. What about the family? Does everyone know about the fact that my mother was a superhuman? Jack asked. Of course, when referring to his mother, he used the past tense, as, as of now, he didn't know whether she was currently alive or not. Of course not. I already informed you that, this was supposed to be a secret that was supposed to be known by the core members of the family. Currently, not even my eldest son knows about this. Only those that are considered elders and hold important positions in the family know about this piece of information, Benjamin replied. So, all the stories that I have been hearing about, they have all been a lie? Jack asked dazedly. So, all the stories that I have been hearing about, they have all been a lie? Jack asked dazedly. Benjamin looked at him silently, he could not say anything about the matter. After all, even though it was true that he did not know how it felt, to be lied to for the whole years that he had been living, but, at least, he could imagine it. He could clearly remember the anger that was within Jack's eyes during the time that he had gone to look for him, to ask about Nathan's whereabouts from him. At that time, Jack also blamed him. After all, by going there to look for a person who had been involved in a murder, then, that implied that, he might be together with the murderer. Even though it was true that Benjamin knew about the fact that, Nathan was cruel, but, he knew that, with Nathan's capabilities, there was no way that he was going to be able to deal with Anne. Not only was Anne strong, but, she also possessed an incredible ability. With just that ability, other than the fact that she had already become a superhuman, then, if she wanted to deal with Nathan, then, all of that was going to happen with just a single snap of her finger. In the end, and due to the anger that Jack possessed, he ended up killing Nathan. Even though it was true that Nathan was considered cruel, but, at the end of the day, he was still his son. So, after knowing that Nathan had passed away, then, Benjamin wanted to arrange for his funeral. Of course, Benjamin never blamed Jack for killing Nathan. At the end of the day, all of this was a result of Nathan's own actions. Due to the fact that he didn't know about the ability that Anne possessed, he had orchestrated for her to be killed. Additionally, even though she had not done anything that deserved death, just from the fact that, by getting away from home, she had prevented her generation from taking over the position of the family head in the family, Nathan held a grudge. Until now, Benjamin felt that it was a pity that Nathan had died just like that. Anyway, there was no need for him to continue thinking about the matter considering that, no matter how hard he thought about it, there was no way that they were going to bring Nathan back to life. Cloning. Does it exist? You said that the body that we buried was just a clone of my mother. So, with the current level of technology, why have I never heard of cloning? Jack asked after a moment of silence. 
Currently, with the level of technology that is present in our country, there is no possibility of cloning successfully. But, the same cannot be said when you go to the strongholds. The strongholds possess incredible level of technology. With that level of technology, it is completely possible to do the cloning. But, it is just that, the results are not that pleasing. Even though they can successfully clone a person, they cannot clone the memories, abilities, and the lifetime of the clone is only a few days. So, not only does it consume a lot of resources to do cloning, but, the clone is completely useless. Had it been that the clone was able to have a lifespan like that of a normal person, then, they might as well go ahead and try educating that clone, trying to see if it could possess the same capabilities as the person that they had cloned. But, it is a pity that the clone only survives for a maximum of four days, Benjamin replied. Jack furrowed his brows once again. In Azima, he had already investigated the matter of cloning, since he was also involved in the health sector, then, he had to do some research about the health industry, even though he was not planning to dominate the entire industry. From his research, he had realized that, even though several scientists had tried several times to do the cloning, they had never succeeded. Although they managed to produce a clone, but, the clone did not have any signs of life. From this, Jack could tell that, the matter of the clone involved the strongholds. And since that was the case, that implied that the disappearance of his mother was also something that involved the strongholds as well. It was true that Benjamin had claimed that they had managed to search into the strongholds that they could access, but they had never managed to find any traces of her. How many strongholds do you have access to? Jack asked once again. Benjamin remained silent for a while, and after a moment, he replied, Currently, there should be a total of about 120 strongholds in the world. And amongst all of them, we have access to five. Seriously, only five out of 120? And he claimed that you had really done your investigation, trying to look for the traces of my mother? Are you kidding? Jack asked incredulously. Benjamin looked at Jack as if he was looking at a fool. Then, he asked, Do you think that gaining access to the strongholds is that easy? It is not just a matter of the fact that, the strongholds are spread all around the world, but, you have to be given permission to be able to enter even a single stronghold. Just having the capability of entering one of them is a hurdle. It is already good enough that we have managed to get entry into five strongholds out of 120. You have to remember that, all the strongholds are under different managements. Even if we are possessing great influence in this country, but, when it comes to the strongholds, the wealth and everything that we possess here, is completely useless there. So, your influence here right now, if you go to the strongholds, if you don't possess any strength, then, you are useless. Benjamin explained. Even then, you should not have said that you looked into the strongholds. 5 out of 120, that is such a small number. I guess I will have to do the investigation myself. Jack said as he got to his feet. It was then that he suddenly thought of something. He looked at Benjamin and asked, Do you know anything about the Panthers organization? I have never heard of it. Was it the one that came after you? If that is the case, then I will do my investigation on them. Benjamin replied confusedly. He didn't understand what the Panthers organization was, but, he could guess that it was related to the strongholds. All right then. I will be leaving. Jack said nothing else, and decided to leave. As for the Panthers organization, he said nothing more about them. He had already spent enough time here, and he had gotten enough information, well, all the information that he could get from the old man. He didn't see that there was any need to continue listening to the old man. After all, just like him, he was completely clueless about where his mother had gone to. Benjamin did not stop Jack from leaving. Instead, he began contemplating about the reason as to why Jack had asked about this. It seems that the people from the strongholds have already begun getting involved in the matter concerning the ordinary countries. If that is the case, then, our family will have to make a move. Benjamin thought to himself. He had been observing Jack all this while, during the time that he was explaining to him about the strongholds. But, he realized that, Jack was not surprised after receiving the information. That implied that, he already knew about the existence of the strongholds before he came over. Additionally, due to the fact that he had also targeted the point where he said that, his mother would have been capable of leaving the Alfonso family if she wanted to, and, where he said that the world was hiding a lot, that implied that, he already knew about the superhumans. As for where he was surprised when he heard that his mother was a superhuman, that was to be expected. After all, Jack had been living a life without knowing that his mother was possessing incredible abilities. Imhum. He hasn't showed any signs of possessing incredible abilities like his mother. But I guess we will have to keep an eye on him, 
trying to ensure that we don't miss anything. Even though it is true that he has decided that he is not going to come back to the family, it doesn't matter. He still has the blood of the Jezdas flowing through his veins. Benjamin thought to himself after Jack had left. Benjamin could already tell that Jack was going to do investigation about his mother. And if that was the case, that implied that he was going to know many secrets about the Jezda family. Of course, the Jezda family was not like the other reclusive families. Other than the fact that they possessed incredible influence over Azima, there was also another fact that they were involved in the matter concerning superhumans. And of course, not everyone knew about the existence of the strongholds. This was just a matter that only those at the very top of the government knew about, and perhaps, a few mercenaries. But, this much had always been kept as a secret. Even though the presence of the strongholds was being kept as a secret, that did not imply that the strongholds were not getting involved with the ordinary people that were not members of the strongholds. Just from the fact that, outside of each stronghold, there was another city, this implied that, this was the place that they were using. In the cities that were outside the strongholds, that was where people from the ordinary countries went there, trying to look for chances of entering the stronghold. Of course, they knew that, if they managed to enter the stronghold, then, their lives would change. Not only would they become strong, but, they might have a chance of getting incredible wealth. After leaving Benjamin's mansion, Jack went ahead said goodbye to Anita. Wendy and Jonathan had already left, going somewhere on a date. And after leaving the residence, Jack began thinking once again. Everything was pointing towards the strongholds. That implied that, the strongholds were involved. The first time that he felt that there was something wrong was when Eric said that, he looked like someone. And, no matter how much he tried asking him, it was as if Eric was prevented by something from ever talking about the matter. The second time was when he met with Maxwell. During that time, it was claimed that he looked like someone once again. And, Maxwell went ahead and told him that, it was true that Jack looked like his mother. At first, he had simply thought that, Maxwell had said that simply because it was obvious that he looked like his mother. But in the end, after knowing that his mother was involved with a deal with the Shadow Organization, Jack came to know that Maxwell had met with his mother. The Shadow Organization was keeping a low profile. So, that implied that, not just anybody was capable of finding them. Additionally, during the time that he had arrived in front of the gate of the Shadow Organization, they had warned him to stay away, rather than inviting him in. Another thing, it was the fact that, the body that they had buried was just a body of a clone, rather than his mother's body. And, the only ones that possessed the ability of making a clone were the strongholds. That implied that, either the strongholds were the ones that made the clone, so that they could replace her with the clone, or, it was his mother that had asked the stronghold to make a clone for her. Either way, that implied that, the strongholds were involved. And more than that, Benjamin also talked about the strongholds. That implied that, in one way or the other, his mother was also involved with the strongholds. And all of this, out of all the clues that he had received, Jack felt that everything was pointing towards a single stronghold. Additionally, he felt that, the Panthers organization knew about his mother's whereabouts. At first, they came over to look for Nathan. Even though he did not know the reason as to why they had been looking for Nathan, but nonetheless, they looked for her. Then, Eric claimed that he looked like someone. And of course, Jack could guess that, this person that Eric was talking about was his mother. I guess I will have to make sure that I get to this organization as soon as possible, otherwise, I might be late, Jack thought to himself. Had it not been for the fact that the system had recommended for him to go to the strongholds only after he had managed to upgrade his authority level to the second level, then, Jack would have gone there immediately. But, he trusted the system, since the system claimed that it was better if he went there after he had upgraded his system authority to the second level, then, there had to be a reason for that. Of course, he had already received information from Samantha that, the leader of the Panthers organization was of the same level as the one that led the Butterfly organization. Additionally, he knew that, in Panthers organization, the second in command was already at the tenth level of an ordinary human, before reaching the superhuman level. From this, he could already tell that, the level of the stronghold that the Panthers organization belonged to was not that high. So, he believed that, the leader of the organization was at the superhuman level. But nonetheless, he was not afraid. As he drove towards his villa, Jack's resolution increased as he looked at the number of cars that belonged to his company that were being driven on the road. Currently, even a Bugatti Veyron was not able to attract much attention, as compared to the new brand of cars that had been released by his future techs. It seemed that he was not that far from dominating the entire car industry. 
And of course, what had surprised him the most was the fact that this brand of car had also been exported into other nations. Unknowingly, he might as well dominate the entire car industry in several countries at once. But of course, he knew how difficult this was. If the government of a certain country decided that a certain product was not to be imported into that country, then, there was no way that he was going to be able to dominate the entire market. Five days later, several hundreds of thousands of kilometers away from Azima. Grudges that they held against each other, or, they wanted to get 914. Something from the other. A city that was bustling with people moving from one place to another, each one of them carrying weapons around. From time to time, fights erupted, as people fought each other due to the grudges that they held against each other, or, they wanted to get something from the other. In this city, unlike the other cities that people moved in cars, wearing suits and so on to go on with their normal works, these people here were completely different. They were filled with a bloodthirsty aura, implying that, they were people that had been involved with blood. Additionally, in this entire place, the number of ordinary people could be easily counted. The city itself did not possess a huge population. Instead, the population numbered to about a million or so, which was way low as compared to the cities like Crystal City and Azima, that was located in the western province. Crystal City was not that much prosperous, but nonetheless, it possessed an incredible population of about 3 to 4 million. Not far away from this city, there was a gigantic wall, blocking all the people outside from seeing what was inside. Additionally, there were several towers that could be seen, they were long enough that they surpassed the tall walls. On these towers there were several radars that were used for detection. Moreover, each tower was protected by a group that was wearing futuristic armors, and they moved in a group of four. Behind these tall walls, there was yet another world. Unlike the city that was outside the walls, this city present inside was more of a magical city that was made from technology. Cars that floated in the air as they moved. Robots moved from place to place as servants, production of materials completely automated and so on. In other words, in this city, almost everything depended on technology. Although the buildings here were not that tall, and the tallest one was about 50 stories high, but, they were all big. This was, Devon Stronghold. At the center of the Devon Stronghold, there was a series of buildings that looked way more majestic as compared to the other buildings present in the entire stronghold. This was currently considered the headquarters of the entire stronghold. This was where, all the organizations present in the stronghold came for meetings, and, it was where the leader of the entire stronghold was found. Outside a conference room in the biggest building in the entire stronghold, there was a group of people that was waiting. All of them were either aides of the leaders of different organizations, partners of the leaders, or their children or relatives. Even though they were staying together, they did not interact that much. That implied that, the relationship between them was not that much close. Amongst this group, there was a lady with purple hair and purple eyes. Even though her expression was currently cold, if one looked closely into her eyes, then, they would be able to see that her eyes were filled with irritation and impatience. The reason behind this was simply because, beside her, there was a young man that had blonde hair, green eyes, and sharp features. Of course, he had an arrogant expression on his face, even though he was smiling at Alicia. Two of us are supposed to get married soon, so, we are supposed to interact more. The young man said with a smile. In his eyes, one, you left so suddenly. And you came only recently, you know, the two of us are supposed to get married soon, so, we are supposed to interact more. The young man said with a smile. In his eyes, one could see that, there was greed and desire in them. Even though he knew that the lady in front of him was not willing to talk to him, the young man did not give up on her. Instead, he wanted to initiate a conversation between the two of them. I already said that I don't want to marry you, so don't even try dreaming of me getting married to you. That is an impossibility, Alicia said coldly. You know that that is not a decision that you can make. Additionally, I only recently came back home, and I was told that, I was supposed to marry you, so, before I make a decision on whether I'm going to try and struggle to see if my parents can change the target or not, at least, I will have to make sure that I know about you. The young man continued. David, it doesn't matter if you want to marry me or not, it doesn't matter what your choice is. But, I will tell you once and for all. I have decided that I am not going to marry you, and, nobody is going to change that fact. Alicia looked at him coldly and replied. David simply chuckled when he heard her words. Currently, he was feeling helpless. After all, this was not his decision. He had been out of this stronghold for a long time, 
and he only came back a few months ago. But the moment that he arrived, his parents informed him that they had already chosen a partner for him, and they were supposed to get married as soon as possible. It was supposed to happen just a month after he had come back, but he requested for his parents to give him time so that he could get familiar with the person that they had decided on. But no matter how many times he tried interacting with Alicia, she did not give him a chance, and to say the truth, he was actually attracted to her, and he would not mind the marriage, as long as Alicia decided to open up to him. David was just about to say something, when suddenly, the door of the conference room was opened, and a group of people with extraordinary auras walked out.